Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew African Methodist Episcopal Church. I am the Reverend Dr. K. L. Porter, pastor of St. Matthew, and I'm so pleased that you desire to fellowship with us on this beautiful Sunday. Let's pray. Most precious and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to preach your sacred word. We pray, Lord God, that the hearers of your word will hide it in their hearts so they might not sin against you, Lord. We pray that it will not fall on stony soil, but on fertile soil, and that it will minister to their very hearts and needs. Lord, we thank you. Hide your humble servant behind the cross so that your people can see Jesus and not me. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my rock, you are my redeemer, my savior, my Lord, the love of my life. And in the mighty name of Jesus I pray, amen. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what would we do? Needing you more each day in such a space. today is coming from Matthew, the 16th chapter, starting at the 13th verse and going to the 20th verse. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build the church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned them, and then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. We're going to place emphasis on verse 16 and 17, which says, But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. If I were to put a title on this text, it is, He Knows Your Name. He Knows Your Name. Have you ever met someone who really didn't know who they were? Or have you ever met someone who was still trying to find who they wanted to be? While seeking God on what he would want me to tell you today, I kept hearing the song by Tasha Cobbs. Leonard, you know my name. Every time I hear this song, it does something to me. Just thinking about the fact that God would know my name. And if he knows my name, then he must know who I am. Well, of course he knows who I am. He created me, as some of us may be saying to ourselves, but it's one thing to know of 
someone. But then it's another to really know someone. God knows every intricate detail about us. Our thoughts, our dreams, our desires, every hair on our head, every freckle on our face, every mole on our body, everything, our strengths and our weaknesses. And he knows our name. I would like to think that when Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter spoke up saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus knew instantly that Peter, although he had been with Jesus throughout his ministry, that God himself had to have revealed who he really was to Peter. And from that very statement, Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter, the rock upon which he would build his church. Has God ever called you by name? I remember one time in my lifetime, God calling me by my name. I was sitting in church, and amid all that was going on around me, I heard the Lord say, Okay. I looked around, thinking that everyone must have heard this loud, audible voice. So I looked all around, and everyone was still engaged in the service. Then the Lord said, I love you, Kay. Oh, my God. I couldn't do anything but cry. And I had my own personal moment with God. Even though there were hundreds of people around me, God made me feel extra special that day because amid all those people, God knew me. He knew my name. Last week, we talked about the importance of knowing how to commune with God. It's not just praying and talking to God and giving him our list of demands and expecting him to fulfill them. It's about spending time with God, fellowshipping with him, sharing our love with him, and worshiping him. Sometimes I can feel the Lord calling me, yearning to spend time with me, and yearning for me to worship him. And usually it's not when it's convenient for me. It's a sacrifice that God wants me to make and be willing to give of myself, of my time and my whole being, totally committed to him and him alone. I was studying for an exam that I had to take. And it was critical for me to pass for the advancement of my teaching career. I studied day and night. I didn't watch television or the news, and I was totally committed to studying and passing that exam. I did everything that I knew to do, and I even hired a tutor and watched tutorials on subjects and concepts that I was unsure of. And when it was time for me to take the practice test, I missed only two out of 150 questions. I dedicated my life, my money, and my time to achieve something that I really wanted. Unfortunately, I didn't pass the exam. And this wasn't my first time taking it. But when I finished this time, I had peace. Peace in knowing that I did my best. The peace that I had came from a deep place within me. While I was studying, I was also communing with God, saying, God, my life is in your hands. I trust you, Lord, with my life, not man. I want your perfect will for my life, not your permissive will. Lord, I trust you with my life. And that meant everything that comes with it. Although I had the faith to believe that I was going to pass that exam, I had also a deeper faith in God that his will would be done in my life. Sometimes 
that may mean that what we desire is not his desire for us. Sometimes what we might think we want isn't what God wants for us. That's where our trust in God comes in. If we say that we believe and trust in God for our lives, then that means everything, not just some things. God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me, beloved? And if I really do, my answer is, Lord, in you will I trust. Delayed blessings, beloved, are not denied blessings. My faith and trust in God tells me that he's got something better for me. More than I could ever imagine. And how do I do this? And how do I know this? Because I'm his child. Hallelujah. I belong to him. That's who I am. Period. That's why it's so important that we know who we are. Even before we can begin to appreciate who's we are. If we don't know who we are, then anybody can come into our lives and say anything or about us that they think they may think we are who we are. And it could be further from the truth of who God says we are. When Jesus first asked the disciples, who do men say the Son of Man is? Referring to himself. Then the disciples say, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But then Jesus wasn't concerned about what other people were saying about him. He only cared about what those closest to him were saying or felt about him or knew about him. His disciples, he said, what they, he said, isn't that how we should think? Isn't that how we shouldn't care about what others think about us or feel about us? Because when people are saying negative things about us, it's because they really don't know us. So the only thing that should matter to us is how those who truly know us love us and see us. Doesn't, doesn't matter about anybody else because they don't even matter. I've been giving a lot of thought about the importance of making sure that I live a life that pleases God and that will serve as a legacy for my children and my grandchildren. We all need to create our own his story or our own her story. Hopefully, we have taken what we have learned from the great legends of our past and have paved the way for us and have inspired us in such a way that we do create new legacies that will also inspire others to want to do the same. I love the writings of Dr. Maya Angelou. They are so inspiring and they motivate us to seek higher heights and they help us to overcome the trials that we may face in our lives. On a pre-recorded show, Oprah Winfrey interviewed Maya Angelou and asked her a very important question. What is one inspirational thing that you would advise us to do today? And Dr. Angelou said, there's an old African-American song that we used to sing, and it goes like this. When it looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine, God put a rainbow in the clouds. Isn't that just wonderful, she said? I've had some clouds in my life, but God sent me rainbows to carry me through. Anytime someone was kind to me, it was like a rainbow in the cloud. And then everywhere I went from that day forward, I took them with me. 
It didn't matter if they were black or white, rich or poor, gay or straight, she says. But God sent me rainbows. God blesses us and wants us to be a blessing to somebody else. Since God knows us and calls us by name, if we haven't already, we must ask God who he wants us to be. The words to the song, he knows my name, goes like this. He knows my name. Yes, he knows my name. And oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. You know my name. Yes, you know my name. And oh, how you comfort me. And oh, how you counsel me. Yet it still amazes me that I am your friend. So now I pour out my heart to you. Here in your presence, I am made new. And you know my name, you know my name. And oh, how you walk with me, and oh, how you talk with me, and oh, how you tell me, hallelujah, that I am your own. God, you know me, so I trust you in my life, yeah. No fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in victory, cause your power is within me. No giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand. Yes, you know my name. You know my name. And oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me and oh how you tell me that I am your own. Yes beloved, I'm here today to tell you that he, God knows your name and he knows whatever you're going through and he sees and knows all things, even your secret thoughts. Hallelujah. Remember beloved that delayed blessings don't mean denied blessings. Your blessing is on the way. And remember this, that rejection isn't rejection for believers. It's just God redirecting us into the direction that God wants us to go. If God be for us, it's more than the whole world against us. Who's calling your name? God's calling your name. Amen. Amen. God's calling your name. Why? Because he knows your name. He knows you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, this is the time to do it. There's no better time than right now. He's calling your name. He's saying, John, Judy, Sally, Joey, whatever your name is, he's calling you. And he's saying, I want you. I want you today. So if that's you, let's pray this prayer together. Father God, we thank you for this word and we have hidden it in our hearts so that we might not sin against you. Lord, come into my life. I know I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I want you to be the love of my life. I know that you died for me and rose on the third day for me. And you're praying for me right now. I receive you today in my heart and in my life. Amen. If you said that prayer, beloved, you are now part of this royal priesthood.
priesthood and princesshood. You are now part of the royal kingdom of God. Welcome to the family. So I pray, Lord, that you will have a wonderful day. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed.